What's up everyone and welcome to the Durbin Compound. Well, once again, we are not at the Durbin Compound. I'm here at Ethan's house and he is helping me do some square grinds on my chain. So in front of us, we have a Symington 451C. Um, I wanted to pick Ethan's brain today on his, uh, on his square grind because I was really intrigued by it. Uh, if you didn't watch a previous video, uh, we, we put him head to head. Um, I don't know the results of it yet because uh, I haven't gone home yet and I haven't reviewed the video or timed it. But um, I can just feel that the work grind that Ethan does is a lot smoother in the cut and it seems a whole heck of a lot faster. So uh, you said 25 degrees? Roughly, yeah. Okay, so he said roughly 25 degrees on the uh, face of the, or on the top of the cutter. 25 degrees, so it's actually less of an angle than your standard 30 degree cutter tip on a regular chain. So he's actually running a blunter tip, um, in theory, running a blunter tip, um, and that work grind is so much smoother, so much faster, just because it's square grind. So I don't know all the science behind it and why it it's so much faster, but it definitely just, uh, pulls the chips away quicker. It's more efficient of a chain. I would never think that a square grind is more efficient, um, especially in the gullet. If you were to have a, uh, a corner in the gullet, that would, make, that would make me think that the chips are just gonna be beat into that corner and it's gonna slow it down. And the round grind is actually like a funnel and it funnels those chips right out of there. So the fact that the square grind is so much faster is just beyond me. But while Ethan's grinding, I'm gonna pick his brain a little bit, uh, ask a couple questions, uh, roll in a couple close-up shots here and we'll try to talk. And I hope it's not all that uh, crazy in the microphone to hear the grinder, but um, well, I guess we'll find that out in editing. So let's change a camera angle and I'm going to uh, show you guys just exactly what happens to the cutter on the grinder and why it's so much different. So you're still on this side or are you already still changing the side? side? Nope, I got, okay. I got a few to go. Okay, so as Ethan brings this, this uh, tooth into the stone, uh, he's basically, you can see this, this coloration here, this blue, dark blue line here on the edge um, that light's a little harsh on it. Um, yeah, so right where you see the sparks going around, that is the actual edge of the stone. Now, it's, it's beveled out here. You can see the light blue here. It's beveled out like this and then it's beveled in on the face of the stone. So I'll, I'll roll in some close profile shots here, um, show you guys exactly what it looks like when it's standing still, but it allows that, that nice corner to come right up in the tooth of the chain. And I'm really impressed with how it cuts. Um, I didn't realize how much smoother it would be. That kind of didn't even cross my mind that it would be so much smoother. Um, but I had my round grind out there um, as sharp as I could get it. And it was really, uh, I, I don't even think I hit the rakers. The rakers weren't even down on that chain and it was super chattery and it was super catchy. Uh, and it was in cherry, what we were testing. And the work grind just absolutely mowed through it like butter. Crazy. All right, so I can change over here. Nah, I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> okay, so Ethan just got done dressing the chain. So the dressers are made of what material? Are they diamond dressers? Yeah, they're diamond tipped. I think they're just, they're basically just steel bolts with diamonds on the tip. Okay, so he dresses the chain after each side that he does. So he'll do one, one direction of the chain, and then he will do the other, or he will dress it again, and then do the other direction. So um, you said that dressers are good for about, what, a couple, quite a few stones? Yeah. And each of these blue stones are good for about 100 chains? I would say, yeah, probably pretty easily. I think okay. So if you're looking into this grinder, um, it's pretty impressive, uh, just the way that it's made. So 
the approach is, is a lot different than your round grind. And you are certainly not bringing the stone down to the chain on this one. You are bringing the chain into the stone. So one thing that's really crazy about square grind is that um, you grind into the tooth so that there's no burr. And on a round grind, you traditionally grind out of the tooth towards the cutting edge. Well, this is cutting edge towards the gullet. So it's really impressive just how a different profile chain change in the chain makes it that much better. So let me ask you a question, Ethan. So the you see the angle. So Ethan runs the runs his race grind at about 30 degrees. Okay? So that's about the traditional angle that you would on any chain. But the work grind is at a 20, it's a more blunt angle. Yeah. So do you think that, I mean, e earlier Ethan told me that the, the angle of the grinder, it can only, it's limited to a certain point and you can't, pretty, you can't go what, past 30, 35? Roughly, yeah. So you can't really get crazy with a crazy steep angle, but you don't need that with the square grind. So when a lot of people would do round grind and they, they steepen up the angle or make it a lot, a uh, lot sharper at the tip. They give up a lot of durability, and so the the thirty degree square grind would be about what you would get out of a, a round grind forty degree, right? Would you say? So you know you get a lot more durability out of the square grind because it is a lot more proficient in the wood at a a uh, more blunt of an angle. Yeah, the reason it, it lasts better is because instead of having your, your typical beak like you would, you have those, those two faces meeting at a, at a corner instead of having... Right. I mean, normally your side plate would obviously be all scooped out and you just have that little thin beak sticking out, but here you have the support of both the side plate and the top plate, and that makes it a lot more durable. So if you need a little bit of background... <laughs> Um, Ethan showed up to a little Saul event I, uh, I was at with some square ground chain and he spanked me um, by, uh, by a couple seconds in a lot of the categories and had all kinds of different Sauls and uh, he's running nothing but square grind. Now, none of those were apples to apples, but they were still pretty impressive how he beat me. Um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I didn't have some bs stuff at the meet <laughs> so when he beat me with some fast saws um i was like man i gotta get with you and get these 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 chains uh changed over to square and after running them they are so much smoother they are so much faster um they're just a different breed so i've actually ordered some factory chains i'm going to do a comparison with round grind factory a uh, work grind, a race grind. We're gonna just compile a lot of data in some upcoming videos, but I just wanted to uh, let you guys see exactly what the grinder looks like um, and just see the process. Um, I'll roll in a couple close pictures of the, of the cutters. I know we're not gonna be able to get the cutters on the camera here, but um, you can just see how the, the theory of operation is completely different against everything that you would consider standard practice with a round grind. This thing's getting into kind of a fast work grind here. Tell me more. What do you mean? Fa oh. So, um, looking at the angles, the thinner you make. So basically what makes a fast chain so fast is how far kind of under I get, like how far under I get the, of the top plate. Okay. Because the thinner I make that, it's like a knife's edge. Right, so you're talking about the top plate, and then you're talking about this angle here. Right, not not like not the, not this angle, right. not this and angle when you look from the top, yeah. but this angle at the bottom. Right. Okay, totally ignoring the side plate, like how thin I make that top plate. Yep. Because the thinner you make it, the faster it'll be, but obviously it's not as thick; it won't hold an edge. Gotcha. Yeah. And another thing about square grind that w we talked about earlier is that you do get on this grinder, you get a lot of. Um, grinding into the uh, the chain links, yeah. or what do you want to call it, the drivers? Yeah, um, the drive links and tie straps. Yeah, so those get a little bit of uh, a little bit of wear and tear on them, but 
it's, you know, people were like, oh, you've compromised the chain, you, whatever. Those things are strong. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and it can be avoided. There is an adjustment for it. It all depends how thick you run your wheel, what angles you're running. I yeah. Mean, it, like, as a chain gets further back, it's obviously harder to avoid them, but they'll take quite a bit of grinding before they break, surprisingly. Right. There are some good videos on square grinding. Um, Guilty of Treason does an awesome video where they go through all the specific details um, in like a feature length film. I think it's like an hour. So if you're interested in exactly how the, how the grinder works and how to set it up, this is obviously not the video for you. Um, I will put a link to Guilty of Treason's video in the description and you can check it out. Um, they get really in the weeds with how to set it up and how everything works and exactly how to how to do it uh, firsthand, but I'm just talking about angles, and I really like uh, I really like that 20 degree work grind that Ethan uses. It's really smooth and it's nice and fast. So if you haven't seen the video already where I compare the uh, Rapid Super round grind, uh, hand filed it as sharp as I could get it. I compared that to Ethan's square grind here, his work grind at 25 degrees. And then I also compared it to a race chain that he did at 30 degrees. So um, obviously, maybe we'll leave the comments open on this. Unless we get a bunch of hate, then I'm gonna shut them off. But um, give a shout out to Ethan. He's been awesome helping me grind some chains uh, for free. Uh, is that a sponsored video? <laughs> um, you know. He, he's been awesome teaching me everything. I mean, he doesn't have to do this stuff. He's a real good dude. Uh, he's, he's definitely doing some good stuff here. And when I get his chains on my saw, I'm like, they're awesome. They're awesome. It's just like, it's a, maybe I'm fanboying a little bit too much here, but we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. If you uh, go over and click on that other video, well, that's awesome. I applaud you for doing something like that. That's awesome to stick around the channel. So obviously click that subscribe button, stick around for more, and we'll see you guys in the next video.